So hello and welcome to another waveform tutorial. So today we're going to look at the Humble Utility plugin, which is an often overlooked but surprisingly powerful little tool. So we're going to look at some basic uses first, and then in a follow-up video, I'm going to look at some more advanced usage. So the first one, which is one I use all the time, is just simply using it as a gain adjustment or trim pot, which you'd see at the top of any speaker. So we've got a loop. Oh. So it's a little bit hot, so this is very important. So normally what people do is they want to reduce the level on the track is they bring down the fader, which is fine. But if you're using plugins that emulate any hardware gear or tape or anything like that, such as this free one from Clang Helm IVGI, it's really good, I recommend it. So we want to drop our level down, it's hitting it a little bit hard. So we could, so you notice if we bring down the level on the fader, it's not affecting how hot that is hitting our plugin. So this is a really important thing that a lot of people overlook. So just simply by using the gain tr trim on our utility, we can feed the right level to the plugin. Now this plugin actually has a trim pot, but I'm just for illustrations purposes, we're going to ignore that. So that's the first simple but very powerful use i use this all the time pretty much at every track especially if i'm uh, mixing a recording project so the second one is to monoize so to make things completely mono anything with low end because you want that to be in the center of your track so here's a subby bass line so you can see i have a second utility which i've named mono and you can see the width should be down to zero and then all the information is 100% in the center of your speaker array. So really important for low end particularly. So you can see a more advanced uh, implementation of this in a later video. So that's pretty straightforward. So the next one is phase shift. So if you notice on this waveform, it actually starts by going down, so negatively first. So this can cause problems, especially if you're uh, a multi-track drum recording and you have uh, one waveform going down and the other is going up at the same time, you can cause severe uh, phase shifts, dropouts, or uh, spikes. Sounds really unpleasant as well. So, just to illustrate that, so I'm going to run our results into this second track called print. So, I have phase left and phase right inverted, and I'm just going to record into our print track. So now if we look at the second waveform we've created on the print track, now we can see that it starts going up rather than down. So sometimes with sample packs you get the odd kick drum or whatever that's negative, so that's something to check from time to time. Here's another little audio quality thing which you can correct with utility, so something called DC offset, so like as in AC-DC from direct current. Or alternating current. So this can create an offset in the waveform. So you see this waveform, it's not on the zero crossing. So you can see at one point it's actually clipping when the levels aren't that high. It's because it's not on zero. So utility has a little DC button on the top right here. And we'll do the same thing and print this to our second track. Now you can see our DC offset is gone and our audio is improved. Simple. So that's just something to check if you are using a lot of uh, samples from vinyl. So also another thing to note if you are using some old school vinyl, especially recorded in the early 60s, some of them can have pretty interesting uh, panning positions. So there wasn't this emphasis on low end in the center. So you can see this particular sample, it's got kick and snare over to the right, and it's more uh, hi-hat and cymbal friendly on the left. This is quite common at the time, so maybe this isn't how you'd like to use it in its present state. So. We can have a look at how we can adjust it with a 
again our trusty utility. So here's a simple way of, it, of using either channel. So we've got left and right channel, so it's basically we just grouped two uh, channels with utility on each and we've gone into so you can see at the top here we so we've got shouts of left stereo right or swap so we've taken this left and have found that 100% left so 50 left and 50 right so the same thing on the right so then you can treat each channel individually or you could just uh, solo or mute the other one if you just wanted to use the left or right track so they're just throwing a delay on the left channel. So again, in the more advanced video, I'm going to cover a few extra concepts on this and using side chaining for some cool and creative effects. So that's left and right channel. So we could also use this to balance the volume level between left and right. Simple but important feature. So also if we wanted to monoize this track, we can simply go back to our original mono utility and do the same thing, record again. So now if we look at this waveform, we can see we've got the same thing coming out left and right. So again, live doesn't have mono track, so it always prints as a uh, stereo track. That's why I have minus three on both sides of the... Uh, of that uh, group there, left and right channel group, because of uh, the 3 dB, minus 3 dB pan law in Ableton. So last but not least is mid side. So this is another way of splitting a channel, but instead of left and right, we're gonna split it into the center information and the wide information. So very simple to do, we just set up a uh, audio effects rack and we create two chains. So one is mid and it's got a utility on it. One is side, it's got a utility on it. The difference between the two is our side, you can see the width is 200%, so it's only taking the wide information, n no mid. And then the mid channel is a width of 0%, so it's only taking the central information. So this can be really handy. So again, we can use this for creative effects. We can adjust the balance, have a more mid and less side for a more centralized mono friendly or vice versa. We can have it less of the mid and more of the side, give it a wider feel. And we can again use uh, various side chaining techniques for some interesting effects, which I'll show you in the next advanced video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.